now so I feel like a lot of what I was going to say here no longer need to say but I'll go through a few little bits um, because like that's what I say when I'm writing a bio and like you have to write who you are as an artist and then I kind of go what's the other ways that I could say it because like I get so um, 
pinned down by like labels, label dancer, label artist, label textile artist. And I'm kind of like, oh, wand. Um, and I'm like, what, what am I interested in that ties in all those three boxes? Like, what is it that I'm interested in broadly as an artist? And so like, and then I was kind of thinking about, you know, rhythm as well. Um, and I think the main thing that I'm interested in is that ties all three is the relationships between the body and space. It's always kind of relational. Everything's in relationship with each other. Um, and then I'm thinking, like, I suppose, what's the thing, what's the language that I like to explore that through and talk about it with? And I suppose that is movement for me, which is why on earth I went to dance school for all that time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that, yeah, what am I interested in? I'm interested in kind of the relationships between uh, the space, the body, objects, people. Um, I do that through movement, through my textile and embroidery work. Um, and then there's this process of repetition within both of those things. And when I was starting to think about rhythm, I think things that repeat, repetition, was like another thing that came through for me as kind of a prominent, prominent aspect. So there is a question or like a prompt and the, that was written that's underneath this video now um, and that was what were my interests in with them. Um, so when I was started to hone in specifically to think about what on earth is rhythm for me, why have I been asked to come and talk today under this kind of um, like umbrella term, um, the obvious one is I'm a dancer, right? So like I move <laughs> to music and different rhythms. Um, and then I, and then I, started, I had a conversation with my friend, another dancer, who I teach with a lot. And I remember him turning around to me one day and going, for a dancer, you're rubbish with music, aren't you? <laughs> and I laughed and I was like, yeah, I am. <laughs> because, like, like he, his way of honing in on music and understanding it and being able to talk about it was he would, he would, he would set the count. He'd be like, yeah, he'd know what time signature it was and he'd know how many beats it was and he'd know how, I don't know, all that technical stuff. And I was like, yeah, I can know that and I can tell you that this is a three, four time. That's the main one I can pick out really easily. Um, and then I'll start moving and I'll move completely differently to what I think I've set it as beforehand. And he's like, why can't you do it? And I'm like, I can, I just need longer. And I don't, and I don't think about it in a really logical way. I just kind of feel it. And I'll pick out a melody or I'll pick out a thing. And so like, it's like, so when I'm watching you, you dance. And you're clearly dancing to the music. It's like, but when it comes to articulating it, you just can't do it. And I'm like, I can, it just takes me longer. Um, so yeah, anyway, I digress. Interesting thing about being a dancer, asked to fuck with them, but... I'm also quite rubbish at it. So I think that's um, funny. So yeah, that was my kind of more literal starting to think about what is rhythm, what does rhythm mean to me, and how do I meet it every day as, a, as an artist. Um, my inability to count, but somehow it's there intrinsically within me. And then as I started thinking more about rhythm, I started translating it into kind of more wider concepts. So I started thinking about, yeah, repetition and things that repeat and, like, different cycles. And then cycles became a thing that I was really interested in. And it's kind of a thing that reoccurs and is in a, a to-do list somewhere of research this more. <laughs> um, so I started being interested in the different things that we the different cycles and different cyclical things. So, like, thinking about the cycles of sleep thinking about the cycles of focus. I read you could tend to be able to focus on something between 20 minutes and an hour, and then after a while that your focus will go, and it will just naturally just, you, wanna, you need a break or you're on to the next thing. And so I started thinking about recognising when that was happening to me, like how long can I focus on a task before it's gone? And then like let, watching that repeat again and again and again and again throughout the day. My motivation as a, as a cis female, my menstrual cycle, like, and how that dictates where I'm at daily, weekly, monthly. Um, 
yeah, started looking at what, what all the different cycles, and in the poem we mentioned, like, the natural cycles of the seasons, of, like, our circadian rhythm, um, all of these things, I started kind of going down a rabbit hole, and I was like, ooh, so many cycles, so many things that dictate us, uh, what's happening around us, what's happening within us, so, like, and then trying to take all of that and going, okay, so what am I interested in then with that info? How am I using that in my day-to-day life as a dancer, as a human, as, you know, whatever? Um, I think I'm probably on the next slide now. Yeah, so I went off on a tangent and all this stuff. And then I remembered what I really like to do when I'm trying to learn about things or researching stuff. So I go back to etymology of words. So I love the dictionary. And I picked up rhythm um, and it says a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. Tick. Got that one. Knew it. Uh, a measured flow of words and phrases in a verse or a prose is determined by the relation of long and short or stressed and unstressed syllables. Number three. And actually that... I mean, the last year or so, I've been fascinated with poetry and spoken word and trying to start writing myself and a whole practice of impl- improvisation through written text and movement. And so that was like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm interested in that. Um, and then number three, a regularly reoccurring sequence of events or processes. And I went, so that's why I went on that tangent of, like, different, different um, bodily systems, natural systems, like, things that repeat. And then I went, okay, cool. So all of that was worth something going on, all that little tangent, and like listen to all these things. So I was like, cool, great. And then I looked up um, circadian rhythm because I knew roughly what I, it meant or what I thought it was. But again, like I say, I like to go back to like the origins of things. Um, and I won't read all of this just because it's a lot. But I was interested in where it said something about... Because I'd already always thought about it as a human thing, things that humans have, and it's how we relate to, like... It's somehow linked with, like, the sun and the moon and, like, time. Um, And then, like, reading this, I was like, oh, I mean, stupid me, of course. Like, all living things have... would have their own rhythm, right? Because we're all interlinked, interconnected... And so I was like, just a little thing that I was interested in. So yeah, so I had gone on my spiral. I had come back to these definitions, and I was like, okay. So how do I tap into this? How can we tap into this? I was chatting to my friend about doing this talk and telling him all this stuff, and he went, "But what I want to know is how you do it on a day to day." And I was like, "Okay, cool. So maybe I'll talk a bit about that." So yeah, how are these definitions inform my daily life? Like, how do I apply these? Like, why? What is the link? Um, and I think the main thing that I've thought about and kind of come back to is an act of listening. Um, an act of listening to myself and my body. Um, I have these natural, like, whether I'm thinking about it or not, I will lose focus on something. If I'm thinking about it or not, I'll go throughout the week of feeling really motivated or not motivated. Or I'll, you know, all these things and behaviours are happening, whether I like it or not. (laughs) Um, And so, especially over the last few years, I've just been thinking, okay, well, how can I tap into this? How can I listen to myself and how can I harness it? And especially, um, I'll say the thing I shouldn't say, about lockdowns and, like, having to just, like, have nothing, have everything taken away. But then, for me, I saw it as, like, a, uh, a great opportunity to structure my day exactly how I needed it and wanted it. Because I also realised I'm a, I'm a person of structure and habit. I could, I could suddenly start seeing and understanding more like so like I realized I'm really focused and I can do stuff anytime between the moment I wake up which is normally about six to about 11 I can do loads of work then I can also do loads of work between about 5 p.m. and like 10 p.m. that time in the middle 
don't ask me to do nothing. <laughs> like, I am a bitch. I just want to eat, sleep, I go for a walk. I could do things like sewing and stuff. I can do kind of creative, mindless, repeated tasks. But if it's like something to focus in on, like, I'm rubbish. So I was like, oh, okay. This is a new learning of myself. Like, and like, when I can do that, that's great. But sometimes I do have to do some, a meeting at two or something. Or I do have to sit down and write something or whatever. And then I'm like, okay, well, I know I'm not going to find this easy. So what things do I need to do this task? I know I'm in this place. What do I need to do this? Um, so like this, yeah, this listening to my body, listening when I push myself to do more, or when I go, you're tired, just say no and, and rest. Like, just, it's okay. Like, um, so yeah, all of these kind of habitual things and trying to learn. I've gone off a bit of a tangent. I've, li- I've put here, I listen to podcasts and habitual behaviours repetition. So recently, I discovered these podcasts by a guy called Stephen Bartlett. He's on Dragon's Den, and the podcast is Die of a CEO. And he, li- he talks with different people who are experts in their fields. And the ones that I've been most interested in, I think, have been neuroscientists and people talk who are like, who, uh, therapists, psychotherapists, behavioral coaches, all those people. Um, and how they talk then about the rhythms and kind of the way that our brains work, the ways, the ways that our nervous system works and all this stuff. And so I could go on on a tangent, but I'll try not to. There's loads of stuff that I found really interesting about that and how that works. And the easiest way to get that information is just to listen to the podcast, (laughs) Um, which is really good. So how do we look after ourselves? So, yeah, one of the things that kind of through this podcast and through thinking about how I look after myself, how do I do it, what do I do, what what is it that I'm doing or what I'm thinking of, um, is so I often talk about or think about mental health. Um, I'm someone who can get very anxious, someone who's who again has cycles of dipping into low mood and coming up to a more higher mood and all of that stuff. And I've often talked about that as mental health, and then through these podcasts and through listening to neuroscientists, I realised that actually it's quite useful to talk about it as brain health. Um, which for me, like, was like, whoa. Um, because we talk about how to look after our bodies. As a dancer, I'm really in tune with my body. I know what my muscles need. I know how to look after my joints and stuff. I don't know, like, I know how to look after this engine. I've trained and I've looked after it for a long time. Um, and, like, thinking about this idea of rhythms or, like, kind of my the natural cycles of the body, I can learn, yeah, I don't know, I'm, le- I'm used to this tool. And then what goes to this tool is a whole nervous system. And that nervous system is linked to our brain. And all of this is something that I think is intrinsically linked with our physical body, but can be forgotten about. Um, why do we forget about it? Why do I forget about it? Uh, I don't really know. I suppose because I'm thinking, that's why I'm thinking it's already doing stuff. And so I, this is what I need to think about because it's not alive, but, but it is. I don't know. Lots of random things. So I um, started thinking about brain health and how we, look our, how we look after ourselves that way. And that was another rabbit hole that I, yeah, that I went down. I've got body is governed by cortisol. That's stress. But then also, that's what tells us when you wake up and when to sleep. And, and, I, and I can't remember the other thing that it works with, but there's two things that it works with in the body, that cortisol spikes, and that's when we, we get up and we wake up and we're like, this is how we start our day now, da 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 this is how to get the digestive system going. This is how to, you know, it kind of it gets us going. It's like the, the, the oil and the petrol in the engine or whatever. Like, you know, it's that thing. Um, but it's too much of it. 
that's when our bodies goes, oh my God, this is, this is a lot. Ah, I don't know how to deal with this. Um, and then like, how do I, and then how do we regulate that? And then how do we look after that? Like, um, I'm constantly, so I like to work out. I like to go to the gym. I like to weight lift and stuff. Um, and I'm a morning person, so I tend to get it done in the morning. Um, and I'm questioning whether actually that's a really good thing for me to do because it also spikes my cortisol levels. <laughs> and it gets them, I question whether it gets it too high. And I'm like, oh, maybe I need to wait until it would have dipped maybe in the afternoon. <laughs> and then I go then to, to help, again, always thinking of like, how do I regulate myself? Like, how do we do that? What is my natural bodily rhythm and how can I harness it? Always going back to that question at the moment, like the last year or so, always going back to that question. Which brings me to the end. Um, and so, so I was thinking about all of this stuff, and this is a, a moment in nature that I decided to record. And I decided to write and start to gather these things, kind of like a score. Find a tree, feel the grooves rough against your skin. Pick a branch, sink back, mold your body into its curve. Let go of the muscles, find a swing in your arms. Let your ears drink in the sounds. Bird song, distant chatter, the breeze through the leaves. Let your skin be caressed, enveloped by the warmth of the air. Eyes soften. Inhale. Exhale. That's my little ramble on rhythm and me.